All right, so my last day in Amsterdam, and this morning went out. I'm having phone issues, and man, it won't charge. I've got like half a charge to last me the entire day because it wasn't charged when I when I went to bed last night. Anyway, got some uh, more souvenirs, round two of souvenirs. These are for my wife. I think she'll like these. These were recommended by Guido, and uh, these aren't. Dutch, but they're European. Same with this, and uh, these will these I'll eat here. Gotta get my fill of raspberries while I'm here, while I can do it. And kind of the big cool thing is this, and this was 15 euros. I guess Guido could translate that. I'll say it was reduced, and it's. Uh, well, Technique and History of the Swiss Watch. It was made in the 1950s, written in the 50s. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are mentions of Rolex in here. They've, they've got uh, one picture of a Rolex. It really, it doesn't name drop a lot of brands unless I guess they really have to. Uh, you know, I've just gotten into it. I mean, I haven't really even started reading it, but I've just sort of flipped through it. And, you know, Rolex being what it is, you would think that Rolex would dominate this book, but it really doesn't seem to. Uh, again, this is to about the 50s. Uh, what do we have here? That's a uh, upper left-hand corner. That's a Patek. And, yeah, a lot of, a lot of brands and mentions... <clears throat> that I've never heard of before. A lot of brands that have fallen off the radar. Uh, let's see if I can find that that Rolex. Uh, what is this? Review. Uh, they talk about the birth of the automatic watch. A lot. I mean, this is dense. This is dense, dense stuff. I don't know if it, it's even a little too dense for me. Probably it is, but uh, we'll we'll see. Where's that Rolex? If I can find it, it's a, I think it's a day date. Oh, there we go. All right, so anyway, I'll check this out. Maybe it'll contribute to the channel in some way. It's a heavy thing, man. This is a massive, massive book. More information than I need, I think, but still. All right, meeting Guido today. And let's hope we can make some videos and... Uh, Let's hope the phone keeps up with me. All right, guys, so <clears throat> getting off tram two. I'm meeting Guido in about 15 minutes. I had to yesterday get that watch book, and then I've got eight of those buildings wrapped up, ready to go. Some of them are filled with gin, and I think two are not. Uh, and I was supposed to pick those up yesterday too, but when I went by, the shop was closed. I think I went too late. So that's, that's a must. I have to do that today because uh, I spent 100 euros on eight. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. All right, so Dam Square. That's where I'm going. All right, so Dam Square. This is uh, Dam Monument. That's where I'm going to meet Guido. And... I was here a couple days ago, early in the morning. It was uh, a lot less people. That's when to come, when it's really early. The tourists aren't out, and you have your, the whole place to yourself. All right, so. I'm wearing the. Uh... Oh, right on. I was wondering what you were going to wear today. Pony. All right, so I'm here with Guido and damn monument behind me and I walked past this Rolex store probably a dozen times and I, I didn't even register. There's a Rolex store. They got Omega here as well? Oh yeah, look here. Alright. Omega Moonface. Yeah, cool. yeah, that's a Speedmaster of some sort right there. Probably a limited edition. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't look like the one Archie, uh, the Loves. You couldn't afford it. <laughs> well, well, if you sold his Daytona, as he would. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this is the shop to buy an Omega for sure. I guess Joma shop, but yeah, that's uh, that looks like 
men, not what do you call it? Uh, sapphire. And yeah, those are all new. Those yeah. are all new versions. All right, got some dive watches over here. Omega dive watches. Any any Rolexes? Cartier yeah, up here. Oh, this Rolex here. Here we go. Daytona. That's gold a one. Beautiful Daytona. I'm not much for gold watches, but that's not bad. And then. The Air King, you if see I'd that If I'd have a, a Daytona, I'd have the old black one. Well, the, that's the, the newest one. The pre-ceramic or the ceramic? Nah, just the ceramic, sapphire, just yeah. new. I used to hate the pre-ceramics until the ceramic came out, and now, I don't know, they seem cool to me, the, the we'll have a look at the But other I, the store. ceramics are cool as well. What do we have I here? I think this in the other store, they'll have very even nicer Rolexes and stuff. And and this is just basic, I think. Yeah, that's just a, a, Actually, a, like a good men's thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the Air King. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this looks like, uh, yeah, 36 millimeter yep. oyster, uh, oyster bracelet. Just a standard, awesome day just. He could use that anywhere. And it would look great with a suit, you know? And then the Bruce Williams. The Bruce Williams. This is what Guido calls us. The Bruce Williams. Everybody should call it the Bruce Williams. It's the most epic well, story of an acting. Absolutely, ever. that was quite a story. I don't know of anybody who's killed a, a Rolex, much less a like he did. Yeah, I mean that's that's. It's, he looks okay with it though. Hell of a video, for sure. This no, this would be a Rolex I would enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one, it's not the bezel I would normally prefer, but it, is, it just it just looks with a black leather strap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so dark blue. Yeah, dark blue. Dark blue. Oh dark blue strap, yeah. even better. Yeah. So the dial is also dark blue, it's not yeah, black. It, it's not black. So how much is the Milgauss right there? Milgauss. Another Bruce Williams in the case, a couple of yacht masters. Rose gold Daytona back there. Seven thousand five hundred fifty. Seven thousand five hundred fifty. Yeah. And then the Explorer two. Oh, sorry, just the regular Explorer. Uh, I want to I want to see which one is which one is more expensive. Is the Explorer two uh, Explorer more expensive? Explorer one is six thousand. Six thousand. Yeah. All right. Can I try that one on? Six thousand. Yeah. Would you like me to film it for you? Nah, it's okay. Yeah, so 39 millimeter. 39 millimeters, yeah. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah? That's a robot. It's bound to look kind of good. Yeah, but I used to always think it was 30, 39. It's 39. 39, yes. I used, to, I used to think 36 was the way to go, but now I'm... I'm uh, kinda, the old one is 36. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is a better one. I notice you have... That's a Hulk, right? Yes. Wow, that's a cool watch. Did you did you buy that here? Uh, yeah, oh, a long time ago. Wow, that's that's the one to have. <laughs> I think that, I think that's the best uh, Rolex in the shop, to be honest. The one on on this gentleman's wrist. That was a long time ago. Yeah. And and the yeah the Air King, which yeah yeah you see a lot of these. I think this is if I were gonna buy one here, that this would be a. Over the Milgauss, the Milgauss is not, uh, not a bad one, but I like the non-green dial, oh, non-green yeah. glass, I should say. Yeah, then that one will be... Yeah, I'd miss the G and G. All right, so Guido likes this one on the right. That's a 36 millimeter Tudor. That does look good. A very, very just average, everyday watch. You could use anywhere. I think I could deal with uh, another two mind? millimeters on the case. 38 would be perfect. 36 is starting to look small to me, but that's a totally doable watch. Guido Pelagos is looking at the Pelagoses. And that's the left handed drive? Yes. Like, wow, look at that. So left handed drive in front and. I, I say the the blue one is my pick right there. That's a beautiful blue hey, dial. You see the sacrifice the uh, three o'clock hour marker in the new ones. The sacrificed. Yeah, but the old Pelagos has the hour three o'clock hour marker. Oh, I didn't know. That. Which oh, is not yeah, on the new one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yours yours has that. So that's how you different. I'm I'm more into vintage. 
pieces. If if they don't, if they like this one right here, Explorer Two. Explorer Two. When they stop making it, that's when I'm interested. Oh. And so, okay. uh, Guido right there has uh, Pelagos, but it's the ETA well, version. The, uh, the that today. Yeah. This is a new one. Yeah, the this, new one, not this, non ETA yeah. version, right? What do you think is more collectible, the ETA version or the non ETA version? Um, I think it'll be both the uh, collectible in the end. I definitely think the ETA is the way to go. The, 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 well, the first of everything is, is collectible. Yeah. Like these are the small. The Blanc Pom? Yeah, that's the Blanc Pom. Oh, yeah. The, now, is that the real sub? That's the question. Is that the original sub? Oh. We'll have to debate that later. If you like Rolex, you debate it. If you don't, if you don't care, you say it is. And you and you say so. This is a liquid. That's a heist. I think it's a heist. Yeah. Heist. Okay. And and it's like a liquid. Yeah. They have these watches with a with a skull on the front. This one doesn't, but it has the liquid and it pumps the liquid. There you can see what time. Oh, it is. I see. Okay. That, that's liquid being pumped. It, I think it warms up or something. I'm not yeah. really kind, sure. Kind of gimmicky. Kind of like, cool. Kind of cool. Hundred thousand dollar watches. Oh, I see. These okay. are quite expensive. Oh. What we have here. All right, so Gassan, Gassan, how do you say diamonds? Gassan yeah. diamonds. Okay, right here on my left, and we've seen footage of this place, but it was closed. And uh, this is the other side, which I think I got some footage of. All right, so uh, reactions. Across the street to go what, to the vintage shops. All right, we'll check that out. What uh, What would you have gotten in there? What What do you think was the pick of the? Bunch, everything I love the 36 blue millimeter Tudor. Black was the Black Bay. I'm not really biggest fan of the Black Bay, but a 36 blue. Uh -huh. I thought that yeah, just yeah. looks so yeah, classy. Very nice. I wouldn't buy I, it here because they put right. they, they sell the Pelagos for 4,100 euros. So that gives you an idea of what kind of prices they do. But yeah, yeah. I I think anyway. I, I I wouldn't buy a Tudor new here, but buying new. I mean, for real. Like if you had to spend your money there, that's what you would buy. For the, yeah. yeah, bang per buck, yeah, definitely. I would say... Otherwise, the, I would have gotten JLC with the moon face in blue. That was yeah, I think the gorgeous. safe bet is probably the Explorer. So, with taxes back, I could get that for 5,040 euros. Which, I don't know, maybe you can sell it in Japan for more. Um, it's kind of a moot point because I can't... I don't have a credit card that has that limit and I don't have that kind of cash on me. So, uh, it's a moot point, but... Um, you would be tempted? I would be tempted. I mean, if I have that cash right now, I might call my wife and just say, Hey, do you, do we price these. <laughs> would you mind me in the next buying 24 a watch hours? for $5,000 in Amsterdam? Yeah, it, this is, uh, <laughs> well, I think she would think that I was trying to just get another watch. Hey, you can sell it for more. I think you'd be like, Bullshit. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, well, I'm not buying fine. it. I think you've got a wise wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, didn't have the GMT. Excellent guy that was helping us, uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Tan. I'll just give him a shout out because he was uh, very nice and, and had a great watch. What, what was I, his name? He gave me a card, but yeah. yeah I, I just found it interesting that if very you nice actually guy. Uh, try a watch on and you you ask, can I film it? They say, uh -huh. oh, that's fine. But if you just take your camera out and start filming, they're like, no, 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 you're not allowed to film here. Right, right. So if you're a customer, there, yeah, which is logical, you're allowed to get some extra credits to do There are no stuff. rules. You just play by ear, right? Correct. We just wing it. Correct. We just wing it. All right, let's check out the vintage vintage things. Yep. As we cross uh, the street. I'd love to go to vintage watches. I wonder if they'll recognize me and won't let me into the store after me bashing their... Uh, oh, yeah, their yeah, Jasper. Watch, yeah. Jasper's place, right? <laughs> yeah. We got to go... He probably Film Jasper. No, I don't know. He, I don't know if if he wants the competition coming in and, and filming his watches. We'll check I, it I'm out. Not, though. I'm not his competition. I'm not his competition. All right, guys. So, uh, Smith and Or Kirk got watches here. Apparently, let's check it out. Entrance is right here. A good looking Seiko SKX. The Jubilee looks pretty comfortable. I like the blue dial Seiko right there. Excellent looking bezel. Love the blue and red. This one right here is pretty good looking too. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. I'd do that in a second. I don't think I'd pick up a Seiko like this these days. It would probably just get about a week of rest time and then I wouldn't wear I mean, it anymore. Still what you said, I could, I could buy them. I could sell like a hot loads every day and then suddenly nobody wants them anymore. TW? Steel? TW Steel. Oh. Steel okay, like so... The brand to get. So... Back there, uh, my pick of the litter there was um, that SKX, but you know, it's crazy to buy a Japanese watch in, in <laughs> Holland and then go back to 
to Japan, but that was a, a Japanese SKX, 380 euros, 20% off, so probably about, We're gonna go to the probably about 300, 300 euros for that. Uh, yeah, save your money. Yeah. Get a Rolex <laughs> for a tutor. <laughs> Yeah, man. But still, not bad. I love Seiko's. So, what do you what do you have on your wrist today? I'm wearing right, the 1969 Connie. So that's a 50 year old yeah, constellation with the first integrated bracelet on a watch ever. Uh -huh. It's got a white gold bezel, silver yeah, dial, Onyx doing. hour markers. So that's a, is that like and a, a Dutch day wheel, which you can't see because it's exactly a quarter past one. But you have to believe me. Oh, that's an Omega. It's a Connie. If you see the inside, and, and it's a mechanical watch. Yes. Mechanical? That's the 751, yeah, that's a mechanical watch. And they didn't what, have quartz at that time. That? 1969. So 1969. it's 50 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean that's very it's got a vintage look, very functional. Got White the gold bezel on there. Yeah. Day date. And I love pretty that accurate? One. How accurate is it? It is still chronometer certified. It so, still will run within three to four se seconds a day. What do you find? Is it like plus something, minus something? I think it was like plus two last time I wow, checked. That's yeah. nice. You wear this a lot? Only on occasion. Special occasion. Special. I even got the day and the date uh, set right today. All right. Normally right I won't do that because I don't want to ruin the movement by doing it every time I wear it because, right. you know, it's not on a winder. Well, it's a good watch to do some watch shopping on. Yeah. All right. We'll need it. When we go into the, the button, there it goes. You're gonna have a time just editing everything. Yeah, right? yeah, it's gonna be a bitch. But so, so Guido was talking with a shop owner back there, and I heard him mention Archie, Archie Luxury. And so you were saying, Guido, uh, that everybody knows Archie and all of these yeah, shops. Yeah, I mean, they've said that what they think about him is, is probably is diversive of channel of uh, shop to shop. Uh -huh. But it, of course, everybody who watches well, a I guess YouTube you... video about Rolex will get to Archie Luxury eventually. Yeah, that's and true. And they love the way he's so different, you know. So. If you sell it's if you sell Rolexes, vintage Rolexes, you probably love oh, Archie. Oh, here we are, Amsterdam vintage watches. This so is it. Before we go in, you might want to. All right, here we are. <laughs> All right, right behind me. This is where Jasper, Jasper is. I don't know if we're gonna see Jasper. We probably won't uh, ask for him, but we might not be able to film. Let's check it out. Don't don't film until you get. Uh... Some lovely vintage GMTs. That Pepsi on the left has pointed crown guards, the El Cornino crown guards. Some GMT bling in the back. On the right, a post-2000s GMT, kind of similar to what I have. Down here, an Explorer 2, cream-dialed 16550. This is a 20,000 euro watch, and it's pretty much the grail of Explorer 2s. Up here we've got some vintage subs. You see the tritium there. A lot of patina, a lot of plastic crystals. All collectible, all beautiful. Over here, a red sub. You can see the papers. It's a date red sub. Tritium dial, obviously no, uh, no white gold on the, on the indices. And you can see that faded bezel GMT in the front. This yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a real Comex. Oh, it's pretty rare. What, what is that? Most of the you see the Comex Submariner. Uh -huh. um, but everyone at Comex could buy a Comex Submariner. What, how much is the Comex? Uh, it's 100,000. 100,000. Wow. And then I noticed right here in... The, what's, yeah, what's with the... Uh, the center, yeah, center it's lens. So it's yeah. white gold, but it has uh -huh. the same reference as a white gold one. It's made out of white gold, rose gold, and yellow gold. Oh, it's right. got three, so three precious... So it was very hard in that time to, yeah. to reduce yeah. that. Right? Three precious metals in that. In that. Yeah. Wow, so it's like a... And it looks like four because of... It's a tritone. Yeah. <laughs> it's a TT, it's a tritone, right? I didn't I didn't know that either. And that's uh what year is that? It's late eighties. Oh and, and how much is that? It's four fifteen K. Okay. Fifteen thousand. Yeah. Alright, looks like right in the middle is a sub and then you've got a Kermit to the left. More faded subs, amazing watches here right in front of 
Amsterdam vintage watches. Just saw Jasper. That is an amazing collection. Uh, you guys will see. Ah, uh, uh, the pick of the litter there. An Explore 2 cream dial, just like I have, except the the faded cream dial. Wow, what a watch. I mean, what a watch to have. Mine have the painted, let me adjust it, let me fight with my sweater, ha, have, has the black painted indices. Uh, there are white gold, but the one in there, uh, no black paint, so you can see your white gold. Beautiful uh, piece. Also, some really cool vintage GMTs. What do you think? Awesome shop. This, uh, pick up All right, well. Patek. I got the. That's the washer on, by the way. This is the Patek Nautilus. This is a Patek clock. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye bye. Patek clock. Yeah. Well, and 52k. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't know much about Pateks, but the Omega we know they're expensive. Well. That was original Omega C Master yeah. down there. Must really see, nice. must see cool, huh? when you come. Absolutely, um, and they have uh, some really moderately priced ones too. Some to some steel date just that were really fairly priced. Beautiful examples, and and you know the leaf hands on one, a tapestry dial on another. Uh, just some some of those vintage steel date justs are amazing, and those were running like I want to say, I, I can't remember the price, but very very competitive. Um, so not not everything's outrageously priced. Uh, uh, when I say that, I mean there is not just outrageously collectible uh, pieces in there. They're they're very usable, sort of uh, modern to slightly vintage pieces in there. Very cool, beautiful area. You can see the uh, canal behind me. Beautiful day too, don't you think? Oh yeah, much better than when we went to the South of Scotland. And, and that was called Amsterdam Vintage Watches. Yeah. All right, guys, so I was just checking the footage and, oh, devastating realization. They got out from the back. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't wanna screw up the reference number, but I wanna say it was a 6542 GMT. Um, no crown guards. It, was, it wasn't a Bakelite version. It was after they switched over to, um, aluminum uh, an aluminum bezel but this is a vintage 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 gmt pepsi and uh the case back was an original and apparently it's not ready to sell they are sourcing a case back and then they're gonna uh put it up for something like thirty thousand euros killer watch uh incredibly collectible beautiful awesome Watch the footage of it. I don't have any footage of that watch. I took footage, but my, my camera wasn't uh, going. Devastating, beautiful. But hey, you'll see it on their site. You'll see it, and uh, I guess you'll be able to buy it for 30,000 30, euros. Love those GMTs. Love those GMTs. Going to another place right now. Hopefully, I can uh, film and not screw it up. Talk about this. All right, so. Uh, all right, so walking the, walk the streets of Holland. Holland, Netherlands, what's the difference between? Uh, Holland is only two provinces, the northern and southern Holland. Uh, okay. and the Netherlands all right. are all 12 provinces So together. should I should but I if say... you hear anything about, uh, about the Netherlands, which is famous, it's probably in one of the two Holland provinces. So should I, be, should I always call it Nether, the Netherlands? No, even, even, even Holland itself, Where even I can the Netherlands Holland. itself, the kingdom of the Netherlands itself, promotes itself as Holland because people Google Holland. They don't Google the Netherlands. All right, so in short, what should I call it though? Just say Holland. Holland, okay. We're in Holland now, so. Yeah. So walk in the streets with Holland, Holland's uh, very own Guido Pelagos. Pelagos, Pelagos? Pelagos. All right, and uh, my question was Rolex. What's your beef with it? And so. It's, it's, well, it's, it's like I said, it's not really my beef. Uh -huh. It's more like, what I call the Rolex reference reach around. It's, okay. it's, it's had what is little that? to do with horology. That's why I say Rolex should have its own chapter you within mean, horology. You mean um, for most users? No, it's like, like the guy in the other watch shop says, you know, uh -huh. you pay a hundred thousand euros for a crappy watch. Simple because it says Rolex, it has a little dot. But it's not a crappy R. watch, it's not a crappy watch. I mean, well, it's a quality watch, If you compare it to right? modern Rolexes who are like 10 times as cheap. 
Yeah, but you know, I mean, that's, that's it's the charm, it's the romance, it's uh -huh. the story. But even it's, a vintage, it's the hype. Even it's the hype. A, I mean, just to be fair, a vintage Rolex is very quality. I mean, yeah, this is yes, yes, show my guys as well, and it does like well, yeah. Nobody's saying it's not. Price. Nobody's saying it's not. But okay, so so you're saying that there's a large bubble, a uh, <laughs> group of people that are Rolex wearers that don't appreciate the no, no, horology no, no, no. aspect, I, and I, that's that's no, part I of would your. More or less, say that's the like the newer wearers one, the uh -huh. guy who buy the Yacht Master two. Those are the guys who want, just want to have the the most expensive Rolex and find out they bought the wrong one. Okay, all right. But, so g give me more beef then. What? Well, just watch the Rolex board for you. I mean, I, uh -huh. I, I pretty laid it out pretty much. All right. Well, give me give me the the two sentence version. Like, what's your biggest beef? I'll put it that way. What's your biggest beef with Rolex? Um, Not that you have. What, what's your biggest no, I, I, issue? Like I said, I, I don't I don't mind the brand. I uh -huh. think it's one of the best brands in will you, watch history. You cannot will you deny ever it. I think it's get over hyped, one? overrated, and it's it's a bubble that's about to burst. And I, I feel like a, okay. a whistleblower screaming in the desert. Really? Okay. So. Uh, so your we're going next. sell your Rolexes. You're, are you saying that? Sell your Rolexes. If you were me, would you sell my Rolexes? I would keep your most precious Rolex uh -huh. and buy other brands now because other brands are hurting. And, and okay. there was a quartz uh -huh. crisis in the 70s. Rolex might be responsible for the death of a lot of other Swiss brands in the future because everybody's stocking Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. Okay, so so essentially, so a lot of Guido thinks might Rolex <coughs> is a bubble. Um, yeah. It's now, you know what three Rolexes I have. If you were me, what would you do? You would keep maybe the GMT Master 2. What would you do with the other two? I the don't sub... really know which one you have, but I think I think you, you, you keep the one you like most. Keep the one and then sell the other two? No, you can keep them all. I mean, uh -huh. you're not going to lose much money on them because they're already vintage. I think vintage Rolex will keep the money uh -huh. unless they go up more in price. Uh -huh. But especially uh, people getting into Rolex now, buying an eight thousand dollars sub. All right, so don't thinking sell. it's going to so do I... ten in five years. It's All right, just so I shouldn't money. sell. I, I agree with that. Um, okay, will you ever buy a Rolex at some point in the future? You think we don't? Maybe. Uh, like never, I said, the only way. Well, the, 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 the biggest possibility for me to get a Rolex is if I if I would monetize my channel uh -huh. and people would actually pay me money during live shows. If I would spend all that a... money to get a Rolex because everybody says I need a Rolex. But my, oh, my biggest beef with Rolex, uh -huh. which which sums it all up, when somebody buys a Rolex or when anybody buys a Rolex, they always say I bought my first Rolex. You and mentioned that yesterday with, with, with Rolex. Yeah, my you... first Rolex. Like if you're gonna buy three in another year time. Right, Nobody so. says I bought my first Breitling. It's a marketing thing, and people don't understand that the marketing Rolex Rolex marketing is so great. It's the best of the best. So they make if you guys make get a Rolex, if you get your first Rolex, you can't say I got my first Rolex. You got to say I got a Rolex, right? My Rolex, a Rolex. I got a Rolex. Uh, okay, a I got Rolex a new watch. All right. Otherwise, you're gonna get on his bad side. He doesn't want you to say I got my first Rolex because it's. Because he had, a, well, it's to you say can that. only after you get your second Rolex then refer back to your first Rolex. Oh, yeah, sure. my I mean, first, if you got okay. five Rolex, you can, I bought my first Rolex when I was 18 or something. All right, last question. So, if you could or did or would get a Rolex, what, what uh, model would it be? Yeah, tell me exactly what you get. Um, I like, because there's actually some Rolexes I do like. Uh huh. Uh, well, give them to me. I think they're overpriced, mechanical wise, and all kinds of sense. Uh -huh. But I like the the blue uh, Air King, the new one. I think that's a nice one. The blue, I the like, new Air King. Yeah, the the, 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 the new the Air blue King. One. I like that the one. The blue one. And the black. What do you mean the blue one? The blue dialed one. Air King. Yeah, isn't that the new Air King? Was the oh, oh the, the Sky Dweller? No, no, no. The, I think it's the new Air King or the, no, the Oyster the, Perpetual. The Air, it's a new, the Air, I'll, I'll the Air King is green. The Air King's got green. And there is a, there is a blue one, I think, as far as I know. But I'm I, I might I might be wrong. Okay, um, not a diver. Bezel doesn't do anything. Um, if I gotta buy dive watch, I'm probably not gonna get the Rolex. I think I think it's just not not not. Okay, well, just give me what. The money. So, so. Uh, I like I like the black, the all black ceramic uh, uh, Daytona. Uh huh. Which is overpriced, but I like it. I like uh -huh. the way it looks. So Daytona would be the way to go for you. Yeah, all right. But nothing okay. like a day just or a day date or a president. I, I really think they're not that nice to, to watch. I okay, think it, no. we got to figure out what this this blue blue dialed. I'm yeah. thinking he might be talking the sky dweller, but my arms. No, no, me, no, so. no, no sky dweller. All right, no let's check dweller. out this watch shop behind us. Yeah, Amsterdam uh, watch company. That's yeah. where I bought my Omega. All right. They got a lot of watches here, mate. We had a day date on the left and a mix of day dates and date justs up here two GMTs, uh, black, black, black on the left, and then 
I guess that's a 6542 on the right. Look at the lack of crown guards in this small GMT hand. Beautiful. Very, very vintage. Very collectible watch. That would be priced astronomically high uh, in here in Japan. Uh, you can see the prices there. Uh, pause the video to you know, read the details. That's a red sub on the right and a steel Daytona on the left. All right, some kind of questionable watches, nothing I'd be interested in. Up here, you've got some vintage Omegas. Those uh, metal bracelets look pretty comfortable, very shark mesh-esque. Uh, back down to these date justs, uh, kind of an interesting dowel there in the middle, and that's uh, the bark, uh, what are the center links are like that bark pattern. Kind of cool, kind of aged, I'd do it. An Omega Matt Stevens there, really, really nice example. Pretty moderately priced, beautiful watch. I could do that Omega. All right, and we've officially hit the low point of the video. Um, moving on, moving on. Got the moon watch there. Many moon watches, a variety. And yeah, uh, you got a little, now oh, it's a little diorama there. And down here, yeah, mix of things. Um, never heard of some of these brands. It's kind of an interesting orange orris there. So ugly. I kind of like it. Very 70s, vintage -y pieces there. Okay, over here, what I think are probably some of the more affordable Rolexes, steel, date justs, engine turned bezels, and um, up here, sort of more precious metal watches. Old. Uh, these look pretty, pretty old. Yeah, this is, these are a lot of old watches. I think that's a, what is it, Yachtmaster back there. All right, a whole selection of date justs. Again, pretty affordable as far as Rolexes go. I mean, if you needed to get a Rolex on your wrist for cheap, I think this is the way I'd go. Just a nice, honest, steel date just. Look at those prices, pretty reasonable. And pause the video, check out the details. All right, it looks like some JLCs, an Omega here and there. Some attractive watches. I like that Omega, but I don't think I'd go this style. I like more usable watches. Something, something like a mid-90s, 2000s Rolex that can handle water. But still nice. Some Pateks. That cream-dialed watch in the middle, that's pretty good looking. I'm not much on the, the ovally shape or the square shapes. All right, a man on the moon. Quite a few of them. Different examples, different styles. I believe that's Buzz Aldrin on the right, or some astronaut. Some of the 70s styled Omega Speedmasters. And back to these. I had to have a second look because they're so beautiful. Which would you go? I'd take either. I'd probably go with the left one just because it's, I want to say it's, probably a little bit more usable, um, more, a little bit more water resistant, and yeah, the black, black, black is, is looking pretty good to me these days. Yeah, yeah, that, you must be comfortable with me if you were talking to me in Dutch. Oh yeah, this, look at that, wow, love those GMTs. Love your GMTs, like, love them. These GMT models are beautiful and 
you know, I think they're pretty moderately priced. I mean, I'm seeing that right there for 12,000 and change. Those are, you know, vintage, patinaed, plastic crystalled GMTs. And you would never, never be able to get these in Japan for that price. I mean, I see these, at, at, it makes me wanna start thinking about wearing these on my wrist back to Japan and, and flipping them. You'd never find for a similarly priced uh, a GMT. That would be, I would say, 20,000 euro in Japan. Beautiful Rolexes. Got some Pateks too, and there's a Patek Nautilus steel. They're hard to get. 54,000 euro. Now that's the Patek to have. Um, not a Patek guy. I uh, can't can't deal with that shape. Uh, and the, yeah, that's just not an aesthetically pleasing watch to me. But it's an amazing watch. That's something fantastic. And look, you've got some old Speedies. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's an expensive speedy. That's probably a one, two, three movement. I'm just guessing. Oh, three, two, one is what I mean. And yeah, sure enough, I see three, two, one there. I just say, just gotta feast my eyes on these. All right, let's see. What's the one to have? Well, I, I, I can't see the. Okay, let's see. That's thirty-eight thousand for the one in the middle, I think. 38,000 euro. <laughs> the one on the left, 8,000. Uh, that's a really, really good price. Um, it looks like, yeah, there's a two-tone. Well, steel, steel is the way to go. Yeah, I'd say the steel, this one right here. But this is like the, the Bakelite version, but, uh, but it's got the aluminum bezel. I think I would, well, Collectability, the Bakelite, but wearability, this would be the way to go. Man, that, you know, that is really competitively priced if you're coming from Japan. You know your head's in a weird place horologically when you when you look at a $12,000 watch and you think, oh, that's a steal. That's a bargain. Your perspective is just screwed. How's it going? Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, oh, time for an interview yeah. from the man himself, Guido. Uh, twice the fish and chips. Yeah. Let's order uh, first. One cappuccino. Yeah. I'm saying that it's good, but. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. Go on. Go on. All right. So fish and chips after some some. Some watch. Thank you. There you go. Uh, Guido's got to go to his job. What My time jarb. is it? Your jarb. Your jarb, as uh, <laughs> Clive would say. Um, all right. And what time is it right now? Let me it's, see. I, uh, 15, I have to ask people. 15, That's what 20. happens when you have a sweater on. You have to ask people what time it is. 15:20. All right. 15:20. I have to take his word for it because I'm a sweater wearer. <laughs> Sweaters and watches don't mix. That was uh, one of my other videos. You'll probably see that. Hey, thanks for taking me around to these places. Oh, I really appreciate pleasure, it. Mate. It's a pleasure, definitely. It's, uh... All right, all roads lead back to Gassan. <laughs> and that... Uh, They'd love to that, have that as a slogan. That amazing uh, sculpture, which that sculpture represents me, Guido. Looking towards watches, but perhaps looking so without a brain on a bad day. But hopefully I'm sensible about my purchases. And I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not that, but I'm one who, who's thinking critically about their purchases. And I'm not like this one, looking just thoughtlessly, brainlessly towards 
the Rolexes. All right, Guido, thanks for taking me out. It's a pleasure, mate. It's a pleasure. Um, Hope to see you again soon. Absolutely. Come to Japan to see me. Oh, I will. I will. This is a good guy. He gives a he gives a thumbs up from me. How many thumbs up have Five I given to for this guy? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> you get, you the only the, bad thing is that you got the first really and only Rolex one. Guy, but you need a bit of balance. Yeah, that's all right. You need okay. A bit of balance um, all right. So, thanks, Gavin. Um, now, I'm gonna ask you some rapid fire questions. I want short answers, yes, no's, nouns. Okay. Well, you um, know, I think my no, go too much, too much. Okay. okay. This guy likes to talk, so that's why I have to do this rapid fire stuff. Okay. So, what's your what's your problem with Rolex? Biggest problem? Give it to me. Bubble. It's a bubble. Okay, it's a bubble. Okay. Uh, if you had to get a Rolex, which model would you get? Blue Air King. Blue Air King. What is this Blue Air King? Sky Dweller? You mean the one with the 24 hour? No. It does the month? No? No. It's just uh, a meaning, plain meaning, dialed Blue Air King. Meaning a vintage piece? piece. No, new one. They I don't think, do uh, it. 2017. They don't, they, don't, they don't do an Air King. Okay, I'll go for the, the black Daytona. Or the, or the Rolex with the moon face. Not the Celine, but the big one. Okay, all right. Can't you just. Sorry. Can't you just say sub? See, it's weird because yeah, I mean like uh, sub sub GMT Explorer two, not even on his radar. But anyway, that's why that's why we love uh, other watch people. Okay, your favorite brand? Psycho. Your, in watches. Your favorite watch that you have? Pelagos. If you had to wear one watch, one one brand, one model, choose it. Rest of your life, you can't. You can take it off, but you can't ever put on another watch. Pelagos. It's a good choice. That's a real good choice. That will be it. Hey. Cheers, man. Take care. Have a great day at work. You too. Have a good uh, trip back. Safe flight. See you soon, mate. Hey. It's a pleasure. Let me, let me just cut this off. All right. This is a uh, video I'm making five minutes after partying with Guido. And, you know, that feeling that you get when uh, you've met somebody you really like. And... You know you're not going to see him for a really long time, and you just hope you do see him again. Guido uh, was and is uh, an amazing person, and uh, wow. Uh, you know, I do this YouTube thing for fun, and when I started it out, I, I, I don't think I thought, maybe I'll meet somebody cool. I never thought that, but i got to say that's... Uh, today I can say that meeting Guido has probably made it all worth it every every minute I've done a video uh, uh, making a connection with you know somebody you have the same interests with and and just you know uh, you can have some good damn dialogue with you know at the age of 42 that's the kind of thing you appreciate and uh, YouTube got me there <laughs> weird weird uh, yeah. Thanks, Guido, for your hospitality. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be seeing you around in person, hopefully.